when it comes to choosing class intervals or if you're using Excel, Excel calls them bins. It's, it's pretty easy, but it can be really confusing from the start. So we have our data here. So here's our data. Uh, it's our cube widths. It's just it's the same as the cubes that you are going to be measuring. And we want to, when we divide this up into bins or class intervals, we want to keep these four things in mind. So bins should be the same size. All right. Think about bins as it's garbage day and everybody on the neighborhood has their trash, you know, Herbie's out. Um, they need to, they're all the same size. So your bin should have some sort of regular spacing between them. And so they're equal in size. Okay. It should include all the data. It should have whole numbers. And a lot of times, especially with this data, um, it needs to be some, you can't do whole numbers because they're all 0.75 something or 0.74 something. It also, it should have a logical division. So it maybe it's all by two thousands or one thousands but something that's easy to remember. And then you should have five to 20 bins, depending on what makes the data look the best. Uh, typically, I like to start with seven and then kind of massage it from there. So if we take, if we take this data, um, the first thing we got to do is make sure that the bins are all the same size. So we're going to take this data and we're going to perform uh, some analysis on it. So we'll go to data analysis. We'll click on descriptive descriptive statistics hit OK and then we're going to take and put our input in and that is our data and we're going to say our output range we'll click and just pick a blank box to put it in and we'll say we want summary statistics and click that on and then we will hit OK now the cool thing here is this shows us all right it shows us, let's pull it out so we can see that, our minimum and our maximum. So the smallest digit in this data set is 0.74, and our maximum goes up to 0.75. All right, so we want to make sure we include all the data. So our bins have to encapsulate from between 0.74 to 0.758. All right, and we want to use whole numbers or logical divisions. All right, so I could see us now just at the top of my head doing 0.74. Um, zero and then going up from there all right but now that we have the maximum and the minimum what we can do is we can do a formula and we can say equals and we'll say the maximum minus the minimum and that's going to basically give us the range right we need to know the range that we have here all right and so the range here we could type that in the range is point 018 or 18 thousandths. All right, now we, we need to determine how many bins do we want. And I, and I said I like to start with seven. All right, so we can say we're going to do seven bins. And then we're going to write a little formula that basically says our range divided by the number of bins we have, want, and then see if that comes out to be a roughly uh, even. Um, you know, what does it, is it basically conform to rule three here? Is it whole numbers or some sort of logical divisions? So we're like two and a half thousand. So that's reasonably logical. Um, we could also say, what happens if we make that eight? Then it becomes two and a quarter. If we make that six. Oh, all right. You know, I kind of like that. It's three thousandths exactly. Maybe it may not be fine enough, but when we graph it, we'll, we'll figure that out. But that seems to work out pretty well. So let's leave it there. So now... All right, we need to come up with our bins. All right, because we want six of them. So we can say bins here. All right, here's our bins. And we want to start with the minimum. All right, so the minimum is 0 0.74, 0 0.74. All right, if you want to get really fancy, you could start with one below. You could go one. And then you can say equals, and you can say this number, 0.74 plus. And then we're going to this. We're going to pick the number that we want to change, all right? Or the the number that, of our bins that we've we've uh, created. Now this is going to get a little complex in Excel, but we're going to copy and paste this down. And we want we want this E20 to change as it as we copy and paste it down. But we want this E17 to always go back and pick up this 0 .003 number. So this may be confusing, but it's just an Excel uh, shortcut that basically says 
I want the E to be locked and I want the 17 to be locked. I do not want that number to change. I want to always point back here at 0 .003. So we're going to do that and then it locks it in place. And so then it starts building our bins and we know we've added three thousands, right? Um, so I can go ahead and hit copy and then paste this down and we said we want to do six. So there's three, four, five, six and then I can paste it. And so I can use that all right, and you'll notice if we click on these, all right, if we click on these, it's always pointing back to this point zero zero three. All right, so if I click here, and that's what the dollar sign dollar sign did. All right, so there are our bins; they're all nice and set up. Okay, do we are they the same size? Yeah, they're all three thousandths apart. Does it include all the data? Point seven four to point seven five five. Our maximum. Oh wait, we do. We probably need one more, right? Because we are not going quite far enough. So we can copy this. All right, good thing we checked our rules and paste that one there. Now we're at 7.758. All right. Um, so once we've gone there, now we can go ahead, do our data analysis, say we don't want this, we want histogram, hit OK. And we're going to say our input range, once again, is our data. Our bin range is the ones we just set up. We're going to do an output range of this box right there, and we want a chart, and we say OK. And so now we see with our histogram, all right, we have our frequency table, and we have our histogram. All right, so hopefully that helps you uh, choose class intervals. Um, you can always pause it and see as we go along, but thanks.